Hey, this is Dr. Drew, and you are listening to This Life with Bob Ford and Dr. Drew. Here we are. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, gather around the MacBook, turn it on, <laughs> turn the Bluetooth speaker on. Another episode of This Life with Dr. Drew and Bob Forrest. You know, I got those Apple earbuds. I can you hear Turn it on now. your Apple earbuds <laughs> yeah, on. Your earbuds. <laughs> Uh, we are going to be t- joined by two guests today. By the way, phone number, if you'd like to call in, is 323-649-8268. Those of you on Facebook and We'll tell them what to call about. Love. We're talking about love, Yeah, people. we're talking about love addiction and uh, sort of addictive relationships and how to end them and how to get out of them, that kind of thing, with Sherry Gaba. She's LCSW, licensed psychotherapist, life, life coach who helps people with lifelong addictions. Got a n- new book. Yep, the new right book. Here. The book's called it. The Marriage and Relationship Junkie. She has. She used to help us out on Celebrity Rehab. Uh, she has been in top. She has her both. own television station. I've been her own magazine. You got to right. go to Sherry Gable. What is the dot com? There's got to be one. And it all started here with you guys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> really? That's where it started. So well, there's a bunch of Twitter stuff I'm going to put out. One is at Sherry Gaba, right? S H E R R Y G A B A at Law of Attraction Recovery. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a bunch of Facebook pages linked there, and uh, we're also going to be joined by Jenny Ketchumbaum, uh, someone the three of us worked with. She was on the uh, Sex and Love Addiction show, with a, it was really primarily a sex addiction, uh, and uh, then Sober House. You worked with Jenny on Sober House, Yeah, didn't Sober you? House. Yeah. She was so like as, another therapist on the staff. <laughs> and and with, like, with many um, sex addicts, they end up having a substance problem that they weren't willing to look at, too, and fun, Jenny, when she started looking at things, was like, oh, I guess I do have a problem there, too. But then she got very serious about her recovery. She returned to school, completed her bachelor's, got a master's moved degree in social Hollywood, work. Moved out Hollywood so she could to afford Washington. to live and go to school. Yeah, now she is a clinician, and she works in primary care clinics, supporting a wide variety of mental health and physical health needs. And uh, I, we are just so happy with her. And now she's a mom. We'll get into that. And with no her. matter how hard we try to promote all the successes out of celebrity rehab, the media doesn't care. They, they want to know care. about the deaths. Right, they exactly. Right. They don't understand it's the they same don't percentage. Know that a porn star is a li- is a licensed LCSW. social worker. Should we, right? should we they go just to, don't want to know. Should we go to Jenny? Can we can we bring her up? <laughs> Jenny, you there? Hold on. Hold on. You got Hold a on. bottle there? You got an iPad? Is everything okay? okay? <laughs> oh, we can't hear you. Hold on. I don't know. One sec. Now try it. Go. I got a boob here. That's what's going oh, on. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So one thing I don't. The one thing I don't have with my two-year-old. I, yeah, I tell you what. It is. It is transformative to go from having decorative breasts to having uh, utilitarian breasts. Like, uh-huh. There you go. I am growing a person. <laughs> yes, you are. How is? How does it now feel to be actually going through the whole attachment process? Um, it's kind of. It's wild. It's really, really a special thing. I mean, I never thought I could love somebody so deeply and like so quickly. Like I, we just started, um, she just started daycare and I just started back to work. And uh, like, I've never missed anybody so much over oh. the course of eight hours. It's wow. just, yeah. What kind of work are you doing? Anyway. Um, so I'm doing, I'm doing medical social work in a primary care clinic. Um, this, this big clinic up in Seattle, um, they don't have any social workers in any of their clinics. It's, it's a place called Poly Clinic. And, you know, we have we have specialties and we also have primary care and no social workers in the whole thing. That's and weird. then uh, I did my internship there um, in their behavioral health department and, uh, you know, saying the prices of social work and, and how valuable it is in terms of um, accessing resources and, and getting on the spot Treatment help. plan. And yeah. uh, they decided to hire me as their first social worker. So... So building out a department and one of the things exciting. that's uh, hot in the news is of course our increase in suicide in this country or any yeah. th- your thoughts about that she's living she... in the suicide capital of america yeah, let's uh, hear what's going on up there yeah yeah, yeah I mean, seattle's so i mean depression is gnarly you know and 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 what's so challenging about it is that you know when we when we get when we get the flu for example right like we get a fever and we don't suddenly convince ourselves that this is our new core temperature right <laughs> right but but you get depression and and suddenly you start having these thoughts like I, i'm better off dead the world is better off without me um i should hurt myself in some way whatever the thoughts are and then because they're thoughts we convince ourselves that they're true and it's so dangerous and right? permanent that yeah. they're true and permanent we, right totally and like they're just thoughts like we don't have to act on them and they're symptoms of depression and so it's it's really tough um 
I mean, this week in particular, you know, I think Anthony Bourdain, especially, like, talk about somebody who's part of your family. Yeah. What a sad thing. And it's so interesting. There she is bonding with her baby, and I'm thinking how important that is for later mental illness. Oh, not, everything. Right? everything. It's all about that attachment and trauma. We're going to be getting into love addiction, yeah. and, you know, one of the, the problems with love addiction is often you don't get that early attachment, that early bonding, right. that early developmental mm. love. So there we are right there seeing it. Mm. That's what it looks like. And well, that zero to three, she's a zero, zero to three is what Drew taught me. Zero to five, yeah. zero to five, really. but, but zero to three is very zero important. Zero to three, very important. So, Sid, I have a, I have a twenty-one month old that has either been with her mother or me or both of us every second of that That's twenty-one nice. months. That's nice. Because wow. I'm, I, and I'm playing the role in the back, like you're safe. I've got everything protected out <laughs> here. Everything is okay, yeah. right? And we're hoping that these these more focused nurturing children will grow up more more whole well, right think about it you're 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 bond you're looking at each other you're mirroring each other it's such a mm -hmm. that's how you feel secure and you feel safe and that's how you trust mm -hmm. the world and how i learned it is in trauma therapy the therapist asked me bob is the safe is the world a safe or unsafe place just real quick, right when I walked in for a session. And I said, son, safe, what the fuck kind of question is that? <laughs> Anybody that thinks it's safe is an idiot. Yeah. And he said, that, that is the telling sign of trauma. Yeah. Right, that you think the world is treacherous, devious, always something to be anxious and guarded and nervous about. We don't have to know what happened to you as a child. It wasn't good. <laughs> What do you do people that made this naive and thinks everything's fine and people are good? I'm super yeah. naive. Yeah. And I totally. really am. It's both. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. The world is both. And and that is the accurate statement. So so it just perverts out. But I don't know that that all this is going to end well because I, I think our society is so sick it will wear, wear away on you. On who? On your psyche. I just think it, it goes in cycles. It has to. There have been worse times. There just have been. There hasn't been worse just, times just for different, this though. population. Different. different. Mm -hmm. This population, the most entitled uh, kind of a narcissistic culture that's ever existed, this uh, this society has never suffered. And lack of connection. I mean, that's look, look at is. internet technology. I mean, we're doing it right now, but of course you, we are connecting to everybody right now, you, but it's... That lack of connection. You always think uh, just the 1300s, the plague was bad. 99% of the American people don't know about the fucking plague, Drew. I know, I know. They I think know. they don't have enough stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and so we need to talk about how, how nursing is important and child, child bonding. And Jenny, how did you choose to, to, to have her in daycare? That's a big decision that a lot of us nurturers are trying to battle with. Money. I right. need to make money. Right. <laughs> you know, like I I am not of the um, privileged class that can like stay at home. I mean, so in Seattle, um, it's just not like Seattle is turning into a little San Francisco. And realistically, um, I need to work and my husband needs to work. I'm only working half time. I'm working a point five in the clinic. So, you know, fortunately, I need to be home with two of the work week days. Um, but it was, it's just a financial decision and, you know, compounded by the fact that like, I would like her to grow up knowing that, um, that it's okay for me to work and that she'll be fine. I think developmentally being in daycare is a really good thing for her, um, for her physical health exposure to all the, I hate that she got sick week one and, you know, statistics show that she'll be less sick come kindergarten and first grade and all those other um, really imperative years where she's learning to read and write, right? Like I'd rather she get sick you right you're now. Not, you're not avoiding peanuts and freaking nope, out nope, about nope, every nope. little thing. <laughs> it's like, oh God. Bring it all on. I rub, uh, I rub the cat on her face, the dog that <laughs> <her> kisses. <laughs> you know? So uh, yeah. what, what else you see in the clinic? Um, so I see, I see a lot of anxiety and oppression. Um, I, I work with a pretty privileged uh, population, frankly. The majority of the people who come through our clinic are insured with really great insurance who you know we're, we're right down the street from amazon so there's a there's a ton of anxiety and depression up in there but that's neither here nor there um and so I, I i work with a lot of mental health stuff on the sort of like lighter end of the spectrum not that depression isn't a serious thing but it's uh, it's it's not a but it's 
and and it's people that have thing. people that have resources to get the help that they want that they need yeah absolutely right? absolutely and you know we do have um we have a certain um, percentage of our population that is uh, low income or on Medicaid, um, and and so that requires some creativity in terms of like resource brokering and like care coordination. That, that Jenny, I love that you got an LCSW. I'm an LCSW. I know Drew well, is my MSW. 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 Uh, yeah, so I, I have my associate. I have one more year before I'm okay. independent. Got it. Um, but uh, but I'm a huge. I mean, I'm an independent woman. You always talk yeah. highly about that. Love term. LCSW. Yeah. I think it's a great training. I really do. I yeah. do. They make great therapists. Yeah. They have great training. I, I've said it to both of you. So yeah, it's not, you have. No, no secret. Yeah. Um, but uh, good, you know. And, and Jenny fought hard for this. <laughs> All of yeah. it. The relationship, the baby, the the career, it's all you've... Well, you've, just going back to school later in life. I mean, I know what that's like. I did that in my 30s. You're doing it now. I mean, it's it's not yeah. easy. So congratulations. Thanks, Sherry. So the subject is relationships because mm -hmm. Sherry has a new book called The Marriage and Relationship Junkie. Congratulations, and, by the way. And, Thank you, Jenny. And I've been looking through it. And one thing that always comes to mind that people ask me about is what, because I'm dealing mostly with primary addiction and, the whole, you know, unemployment and violence and drugs and ODs. And so <laughs> the spouse, whether, and often, it, and it's now shifted to almost 50 50. The, you know, that it's 50% female, 50% male. In treatment. Drug, drug yeah. addicts, yeah. yeah. Which is refreshing yeah. to know that the women mm -hmm. are stepping up and bringing their <laughs> percentage to the table stigma but, must be down so i've dealt with husbands and or wives that ask me continuously or over and over again what does in sickness and in health fucking mean at this point like how much do you stay in <laughs> well, you know what i mean it's, ju it's just like the addiction becomes unmanageable when you're in a relationship and your life is becoming unmanageable because you are obsessed over that addict or alcoholic which is how what can happened you not to me. be when somebody's ODing well, and not a father to their children or mother to their children you are how do you not you get be help, affected by that you get your own mm -hmm. program you go to al -Anon, you get your own 12-step yeah. program etc cetera, etc cetera. Yeah. but eventually like for me i started getting sick i got shingles started losing my hair my anxiety skyrocketed I knew it was time to call it quits but of course that wasn't enough because I am <laughs> <laughs> that was just the beginning oh, was, now and then I okay so I get divorced and then I take them back oh of course and then it relapses again but this time I am done I can promise you that and I'm very happy but I had to get to where I got and that's just part of the the disease of relationship mm -hmm. and love addiction and marriage addiction but we're not, not robots so no. I, I I would imagine he's probably gonna get well and then what that's okay I I hope he right? does. I w I'm, I'm in a really good place. I needed to get to this place. But you got to help people understand that a lot of people aren't in that good no. place. And so I'm going to say this. If you choose to stay with your addict or alcoholic, that's okay. There's no shame in that. Just have a good mm -hmm. program in your life. You can love an addict or alcoholic if it's not mm -hmm. causing you to spin out of control. If you can live mm -hmm. your life and have your line in the sand and your boundaries, great. I couldn't do that anymore, so I had to move on. And, and mm -hmm. Jenny, I would say, what is the other side of the coin? There's a lot of sex addiction in male population i would say and what are women to do because you're that's kind of your field where you understand how mm -hmm. destructive porn addiction and sex addiction can be in a marriage and what is in sickness and in health what does it mean yeah, yeah i mean it's it's complicated right because uh, a lot of sex addiction there's that um destruction of the intimacy the physical intimacy because um one person's mm, physical capacities go elsewhere, right? And so whether it's a man or a woman, um, I, I think porn is actually playing a huge role in in that because we're just developing some really unrealistic ideas of, of what we should be doing in the bedroom, how we should look in the bedroom and in our real lives, and how we should treat people, right? And so um, in sickness and in health, like, it, yeah, like Sherry was saying, if, if you can have healthy boundaries, if you can have um, a a threshold. This is this is my critical max. This is this is what I am unwilling to put up with, and everything up to that point, um, I will love you back to health. You know, like we can work through everything except. Well, oh, I like X. the sound of that. Can you explain that again? I like the sound of that. Yeah, and and again, I mean, let me. I'm gonna put a fine point on what the line has to be if it's affecting functioning yes. and health and your yep. your own legal status. Like like Sherry was describing, getting sick, and you know, yep. if you, and you're not yep. functioning, and you're the, the, okay, now that should be your line of the sand. But go yeah. ahead, go ahead, Jenny. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in in sex addiction recovery, you know, we we worked with something called um, 
circle plans, right? It looks like a bullseye. And so everything in that bullseye is stuff that is, um, we're not going to put up with this. This is this is considered a lapse. At the center lapse. of the bullseye. Yeah. Center, the center of the bullseye, right? The next ring around the bullseye is all about like slippery behavior that can land you in that bullseye that, oh, this is not acceptable area or can act as like an identifying marker to move you into that outer ring, which is really about healthy activities that help you stay engaged with yourself and help you stay engaged with the person whom you've married, right? Right, so, right. so do you um, share that with your partner? Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's important for both partners to have, like if, yeah. if one person in the couple is struggling with sex addiction, chances are the other person is probably struggling with some boundaries, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and again, I think it's that lack of connection, that into yeah. me, I see intimacy. There's that connection that's missing when there is a sex addiction. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I think same with love addiction. Yeah, I, right? think, I, think, yeah. I think there's a lot of disconnect going on. But I, the, what it, I'm trying to lead you guys to say, <laughs> I'm, well, what I'm trying to say is, I don't think we should say in sickness and in health at marriages. Mm, mm. I, 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 mm. I think it's an old tradition that that is sickness ridiculous. Sickness and health. When to, women, in, in so that was invented when women were property. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. I think it's something that that. But uh, I don't think you should be bailing on people because they get sick. Yeah. Totally. Right. Th- that that's this fine line that needs to be talked about. And what about. can you live with? You talked about earlier about when your behaviors don't match your values. So right. my value was to make my marriage work as as much as I could, and then I couldn't anymore. So what right. what is your line in the sand, Bob? Like when would you? That would be that like, it, I just have one line in the sand. If it's negatively affecting the children, you, something has to be done. Mm-hmm. Right. It's a simple. Not if it's, it's negatively affecting role. you. No, I can tolerate a lot of shit. <laughs> Yeah, but is that is uh, that healthy? And is that codependency, Drew? I think Possibly. most. Well, I don't. Th- I don't think we need to. I don't think we need to jump to diagnose each other right now. I think that's. Like, <laughs> that's so fun, though. Get a little close, to Bob. Get a little close here. Woo. No, <laughs> no and, and then <laughs> laughing and belittling. That's just typical of the bullying in our society. Oh my what god! I'm t- <laughs> it's true. It's true. Oh, Bob, can I give you a hug? <laughs> no, I, no, I'm. T- no, but if we do, we are representatives of the mental health in, in kind of world, yeah. and if we do what is socially unacceptable in the society, I don't think it's good. I think well, it's we've it's all agreed bad. that humor is something we need more of. I thought to, to, to label me codependent because I'm oh. saying I can tolerate. No, I said, are we talking about it? I didn't say you are one. I didn't call well, you. Well, I don't want to go down rabbit hole, but <laughs> but but you can tolerate a lot, and you're not codependent. Yes. You can tolerate yes. a lot. Yes. And I think we're a society that doesn't tolerate much. I think most people who aren't love addicts or, or, or people with poor boundaries or struggling with that identity are out the door as soon as you don't dress the way you want them right, to. That, if you that's, gain 10 that's pounds. That's more like a love avoidance. If you avoidance. gain 10 pounds. I think what you're saying is you don't like labels. You don't want judgment. No, no, no. But he, he's, I think what it is, is if I can speak on your behalf. Because I think is, a lot of people care about this. They want some guidelines. Yeah. And, and I think we're too, like, we're too intellectual and, about it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't make it practical I understand. for people. And, and, yeah. and there's too much on the other side where people are leaving for nothing. Exactly. And there's too much labeling and belittling. I agree with all that. Right. I agree with that. So. so I'm just trying to get the two experts. You're the you're the one that falls in love with junkies. <laughs> she's she's the one she's the one that's got the sex thing, which is a huge part of marriage these days. I was at mm-hmm. Kevin Hart's stand up at the Hollywood Bowl. He has a whole bit on he happened into his wife's porn watching i so get what you're saying bob because there's so much shame so many people judged me and especially when i took him back i mean i was embarrassed i couldn't even speak about it i totally understand it and so i get what you're saying and then eventually so i think what what drew's saying is that eventually it just it didn't work because i was getting sick but i tried Mm -hmm. i really tried so so watch this so in Kevin Hart's stand-up, and he doesn't like people to say it because he's going town to town, but I'll just say that in his wife's porn search were not men that resembled him in any way. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And he goes mm-hmm. into that, right? Mm-hmm. Drew, what are you doing? I'm just thinking. You're I, looking I'm, in your porn. No, no, no. I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking porn. So, no, I was, I'm thinking about that. That's a common thing. It's a very common thing. And I and so Jenny, do you ever come across this, or you're just strictly kind of in the social work helping field now? Are you are or are you in helping couples with the sex addiction? I mean, I've I haven't worked with couples with sex addiction. I've worked with well, it's with, a component uh, of, quite a of few communication, men right? Who um, have what I would consider 
sex addiction, I don't know that they themselves came in identifying as that. Um, the majority of people with whom I've worked uh, who have, who I would say have like sex addiction came in saying like, I can't connect to anybody. I can't like get it up when I'm with somebody, um, that sort of thing. And then, you know, after we sort of like took it apart a little bit, turns out they're masturbating like five times a day to anime, to porn, to, to whatever it is. But uh, that sort of like that, that reserve, that essence of yourself gets spent throughout the day on yourself and then it's harder and harder to connect with people. So, mm-hmm. And it's um, an avoidant particularly. Yeah, distraction. Hey, can, can I, something is ringing yeah. in my head, Jenny, and I, <clears throat> I don't know why I'm thinking about this, but um, I think it's pertinent to our conversation, but you had a very vivid sort of experience that for some reason stayed with me. Do you mind, mind me bringing it up? It, it's, Go for it. it yeah, it's sure. when you you said you were in your career doing porn and somebody said to you, I loved you, I love you during a, a scene. Oh, it broke me. Right. Mm. Like I, I started to weep. Like they, like we had sex, whatever, and then, and it was, it was for, um, it was for one of the softer core type of companies. I, mean, I don't want to promote it here, not a big deal, but, um, yeah, and then and then he said at the very end of the scene, like leaned over and whispered, like "I love you," and I was just like so taken aback because it had been this like really intimate moment, um, videotaped, whatever it was, porn was so intimate, right? Uh, and then to have those words coupled with that, I was just like, oh, hmm. weeping, weeping. And, and you got angry too, as I recall. Oh yeah, like this outside place. the rules. That's outside yeah. the Should've rules. Told me before. Is... Yeah, like that. It was not some. At no point did the director be like, oh, and by the way, at the end, like he whispered to the male performer, tell her that you love her at the very end. Like we want to get her reaction, right? Like, Was it kind of like you're disassociated and then all of a sudden you, you like wake up when someone totally. says I love you, right? You're like totally. suddenly becomes human and it, you're, well, you're no longer yeah. like out there. It's all of a sudden inside of you. Well, I mean, and the same thing happened when I went into sex rehab, right? Like people were calling me Jenny instead of my porn name and that was really grounding mm. it was like holy wow. cow and that's one of the things that started to unravel this like identity and this um shield that i had built up around myself was that's not you know 26 years old and people haven't been calling me my my name the name that i will die with um People hadn't been calling me that. So it became it was, personal. Totally well, it was, it's, it's a really real common personal. thing with, with celebrity addicts that they all have a name that they don't use. That's not their real name. It's just so yeah, common. I just found Johnny Knoxville is not his real name. I know. That's so I weird. Know, I know. You mean addicts in general? No, well, addicts celebrity in general, but, it's, but celebrity addicts always. They have a, they, the name they use in public is not their they name. They kind of cover, or, or codependents in cer- yeah. certain cases. So, yeah, yeah, yeah they come yeah, yeah. to L.A. and they invent, they invent mm-hmm. a an a idealized persona. perception mm-hmm. or, or who they want to be and then they live into that but, and then they're sort of living a cartoon life and start moving away from their core and start feeling mm-hmm. weird when people try to address the core and the and problem by the that, real name is what we would start with we just start with what's your name and yeah. we'd say well that's what we're going to call you yeah. yeah and that and what happens is the people that they get in relationships with are falling in love with the name with the persona with the persona mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. they're not usually that person fifty percent of the time, at least. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Listen, yeah, they, they I, can I ended fake. Up in a relationship they can with be somebody those that people. Not what I would have dated at all. Say that again, Jay. I ended up marrying somebody who is like the antithesis of everybody I've dated as Penny Floyd. That's probably a good thing, right, Jenny? <laughs> oh yeah. No, he's yeah. So let's get back to Amer- America. Is the divorce capital of the world, and I'm fascinated by. I've been divorced three times, right? I'm t- I, I, I'm fascinated by the Not subject. Not that I'm proud of it, but I'm trying to stick. Bob, but, I take, are you shamed of that? Three no, times? I don't. I'm not. Like my heroes are like George Jones and Hank Williams. Like I don't care. What okay, because there was a lot of shame for me, and that's one of the reasons because why he, I wrote the book. Right. Because I felt embarrassed. Like, who do? You, how do you tell someone on a date? Uh, yeah, I've been married a couple of four. Yeah, times, and, and it evolved into that shame when mm-hmm. I was growing up in Palm Springs. Like Frank Sinatra been married like seven times. Or I look at Elizabeth loved Taylor. Him. Yeah, right. Elizabeth Taylor. So it's another way, another idea that became we became very victorious in our thinking about things over the last 30 years. But the people think, what's wrong with her? Like, why mm-hmm. can't she stay married? What My is mom would have said, you got a bad picker. <laughs> a bad picker? Mean. And sure, but and also... The- 
to, t- to address earlier, you know, I just believed in love. You know, maybe I just didn't use a lot of my brains. Just they smelled good, they look good, and I married them. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but that I, is, a, that is, <laughs> you know, I like that philosophy. Can, but can we really fix someone? Because that's what, as the warning signs in dating are happening, you're thinking, well, I can live with that. You're, you're talking about the boundaries, the, the intimacy circle, Jenny. So as you're dating, there's things you're going like, well, I don't know about this. Oh, I can get around that. Or I could live with that because you're heading Don't towards... fall in love with the delusion or the right. illusion. Or think you can handle something. And can the you same fix kind of people? Denial. You, in, the, in your book, you say, can we really fix someone? I think we can fix ourselves, right? Right, yeah. you can't change. You can't, yeah. mar- well, you can't marry this, potential. This joke, can't... how many social work... Oh, sorry, oh, go ahead, Jenny. I'm sorry. Bring that social work in yeah. here, Jenny. Well, it's, it's a joke. Like, how many social workers does it take to change a light bulb? Just one, but the light bulb has to want to change. Right. right? So, uh-huh. <laughs> that, that's, the, that's the conundrum in mental health generally, right? Totally, yeah. totally. But, I mean, there's, you know, there's research that shows that, like, the... The problems that we have at the beginning of the relationships are the problems that we're going to die with. And so when we're picking our significant other, we're not necessarily picking the qualities that we love, but we're picking the problems that we can live with. What we right? know, what we can relate yep. to. Exactly. Yeah, like, like if you I, had, can, I can deal with this problem forever. If you had an unavailable parent, you, you might pick an unavailable partner. If you had an mm-hmm. abusive parent, you might pick an abusive partner. If you mm-hmm. had parents who were addicts or alcoholics... You Wait, can, go over that again. So, so whatever you were raised with, that's what you would. That's what you're familiar with. You're familiar that's with. What Particularly you know. when it's traumatic. When it, when mm-hmm. it's traumatic, that tends to create attraction later in life. So, if it was abandoning, if it was emotionally abusive, if it was physically abusive, highly critical. And I've never critical. been with somebody that's highly critical. You never have? No, I mm, avoid I believe, it. Your health? Well, isn't, okay. isn't there some trauma yeah. that you just cannot yeah, there, even, yeah, there are no s- way? Yes and no. Usually end up with the same thing, though. But let's talk about it. we got to take a little break. Okay. Calls. We'll take calls at 323-649-8268, 323-649-8268. People on Facebook or uh, Periscope, give us a call. Uh, we are here with Jenny Ketchum. Uh, Jenny, a website or your book, I Am Jenny. Right? I am Jenny. Yep. Check, sure. check, Congratulations to you, Jenny. And uh, <laughs> Sherry Gaba, her book, The Marriage and Relationship Junkie. We'll be right back. Well, you've heard me speak about supplement Bergamot for about two years now, and most recently their sport formulation, which helps reduce inflammation, shortening workout, muscle recovery time. But I want to come back to the formula that originally got me excited about the brand. That is the Bergamot Mega Plus. Yep, like all Bergamot products, the Mega Plus O uses key extract from the bergamot citrus fruit. It's a unique fruit, extremely rich in polyphenols. They've been shown to reduce the risk of heart disease, polyphenols. And bergamot mega plus O works like a natural statin, right? It's for these medications you use to lower cholesterol. Well, this works in precisely the same way. In addition, though, it addresses another condition called metabolic syndrome, which is abdominal fat, high cholesterol, high triglycerides, high blood pressure, insulin resistant metabolic syndrome. It helps with that. It also helps with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Now, physicians can recommend different pharmaceuticals for these conditions, but Bergamet, but Bergamet Mega Plus O offers the all-natural solution. Cardiologists and physicians worldwide do recommend Bergamet. Its effectiveness is the subject of many scientific publications. I've taken it myself. I have recommended and have patients on it right now. And for a limited time, Bergamet is offering our listeners 25% off any of the supplements by entering the code DRGaryW at checkout. That is Dr. Drew, all one word, at checkout. To learn more, visit bergamet.com. That is B-E-R-G-A-M-E-T, B-E-R-G-A-M-E-T.com. And remember that use that code, Dr. Drew, at checkout. Ooh. We just discovered something. Dr. Drew blew my mind right now, ladies and gentlemen, in the commercial. <laughs> I actually have married a person who's very critical. But I divorced them. Drew, what Drew, I said, Drew just pointed it out. And, and what I said was I, I was aware of that. And, 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 and he's well enough now that he doesn't put up yeah, with it. Yeah, don't live in but, that world anymore. But he's still attracted to the kind of person got, who yes. engages in that kind of critical input. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we and Jenny, give those... me therapy. I can tell you what my relationships were. People that were attracted to the fake name was very early mm-hmm. on. When I was a successful musician, people were attracted to something the they monster. thought I was. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then when I got sober... That that was a whole weird kind of thing where Drew told me to do the opposite. And I've heard you say that, too. So I mm-hmm. went out with somebody one night, and I found it very kind of, I felt uncomfortable. I didn't mm. like it. So nice. then I thought, 
I got to follow up with another date with this. Well, you also should be looking for things that you have common, common values. But I was just looking at that. It made me feel uncomfortable and I didn't really feel fitted with the person. So I stuck with them for four years. <laughs> <laughs> But I love, she's great. You take but, good direction, but, Paul. <laughs> from him, I do. <laughs> but Jenny, the, the whole field of, a, of whole, the landscape of attraction is very confusing for people. And yeah. if you have trauma, attraction can be very strong to the kind of person that is like the perpetrator that was the original trauma, traumatizing yeah. individual. And that attraction never really goes away. You can just choose yeah. not to respond. Remember, we used to always tell you guys, uh, think butterflies, not lightning bolts. Yep, mm. you know, and I actually use that uh, in clinic now. <laughs> but butterflies um, can be the wrong move also. Uh, I mean, they're much less often the wrong move, right? It, it, it's not, uh, yeah, it, everything starts with a slow burn. I mean, there's something else that, that you guys have said in terms of changing along with your partner. Uh, and Drew, you said this to me and it blew my mind. Um, when so we're locks and keys right? oh yeah and when yeah, the yeah. shape of your lock changes yeah uh the shape of the key has to change yeah. and um i know that in terms of my attraction you know when i had a really close relationship with my mom i was attracted to people who were really volatile who um were sort of like emotionally uh unstable pretty much the same but uh who were partiers who were really big personalities um, and then the less, like, as I got sober and the relationship with my mom really started to change and the relationship with my dad started to grow, I became more attracted to people who were stable, who um, were like, would think ahead about things, who were fiercely loyal. And, and that's how I think probably how I ended up marrying my yeah, husband. I was going to ask you, Jenny, amazing. what are the qualities that he has that and, attracted and you? In addition to what mm -hmm. Sherry just asked, uh, tell us the story about your dad, too. Thank you for sharing that with me, if you're comfortable sharing it with everybody else. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, we want to cry. So, mm -hmm. um, so uh, you know, both both my dad and my husband are just fiercely loyal, kind, generous men. And, um, they, you know, they are the for as much as I'm like, let's sell everything, and, and not in like a, a mania kind of way, like let's sell <laughs> everything and move to, you know, but he'll be like, well, let's think about this first, right? And like, so we we have, we really come together, but. Um, you know, the, the year before I went to rehab, I started talking to my dad again and uh, the beginning of that year, actually. And we started, we, we hadn't spoken in like 13 years. That's um... Yeah. And uh, anyway, so, so um, with the help of a lot of therapy and um, time, this is, this is the slow burn, Bob. This, this is the butterflies, you know, like it wasn't like relationship, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, it, it was like. You know, when I when I talked to him that first time, I said, "How how do we do this?" And he said, "We just keep calling each other back." And we did. Um, and so, you know, uh, God, what it's been nine years now, and um, the day after our baby shower, so January twenty third, January twenty second, because we had the baby shower on my six year sobriety anniversary, they made me have. They made me a pie with a six on it because, I don't know, they they still sort of like a lot of my friends sort of grapple with like the cake idea, like giving you a cake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, so they just baked goods. But um, uh, my dad got diagnosed with stage four uh, liver cancer, um, primary liver cancer, and was given like two to three weeks to live. That's so, um, oh, my God. Aww. Yeah, we transferred all of um, our care, like our prenatal care down there. Cause she was due on the, tw she was due on the 19th and then, um, we found out that she was breached. She flipped at like the last minute. And so I, I had to have a C-section and, uh, my dad had, had said that he wanted to wait until she came. And then we found out that I had to go through surgery and everything. And I told him, you know, I'm going to need you in the operating room. <laughs> and I, I just feel so blessed that, that he and I kept calling each other back, you know, because I got to spend the last three weeks of his life at his bedside. It stopped going to work. I. Uh, okay, I'm going to interrupt you. Go and, for it. And it, it is a story. Bob and I have been talking lately about forgiveness and humility mm -hmm. and acceptance and this kind of stuff and the, to me i get chills when i think how powerfully 
healing. You, well, how healing you, but, it is. but you had to experience those phenomena that we're chanting about all the time, with with starting with I imagine forgiveness. Yeah. And but, but yeah. like but writ large, I mean, you like you like dove into it like I very few people do. Uh, so it's a it's a wonderful example of the of the rewards that can be reaped from being forgiving and accepting and loving. Yeah, um, and you know, I, I think what was really wonderful about my participation in anonymous programs is that it helped me to understand that like he, he had to forgive me too. Like I I wasn't the most pleasant of people, you know. And I mean, God in 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 the executor of his estate and in going through. Uh, probate i've had to come upon their divorce papers Ugh, don't do that <laughs> um you know but my sister and i had to look for something very specific and so we're going through everything and god he saved every email that i wrote him and they were just cruel and so we both had to to forgive each other you know and i mean granted i was like 13 i was a kid and i was being influenced by my mom and um he still had to like. He still had to forgive me too. So. But now that you're a mom, I I think you would see that it's it's pretty easy to forgive as a parent, as compared to the give forgiveness challenges of being a child of a of a parent who misbehaved. Yeah. It, it, that's a bigger challenge, a bigger, a taller order. Yeah, I'm so glad I did. Yeah. So there you go. glad. That's yeah. why forgiveness is 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 a powerful, powerful healing thing in our society and it's gone and it's frowned upon and you have to have humility in order to come at the forgiveness right and yeah don't forget yeah. self-forgiveness and not it, just forget yeah. well that's we talk about that that's really important well part of healing so through a love or marriage relationship junkie situation is to have self you know self-love compassion compassion you well know, you pointed it out greatly is that that you, you, you know you you keep trying you keep having an open heart you keep doing it and it doesn't end well and then you're we're supposed to feel ashamed and that that has to you have to forgive yourself I mean, like you don't just wake up one day and go oh i want to have four failed marriages or oh i want to be <laughs> yeah. a junkie i want to you know end up homeless you know so there are reasons that you get to these places in your life and to you know look at all those pieces and and understand them and heal from them there's a lot of guys that i know that have had a couple of, of failed marriages that just don't even date they're just asexual and just have, well, they, they'll say and this is in their early late 40s early 50s it's just not in the cards for me hmm. right mm -hmm. so so then what is dogs and like watching well, TV? No, like, I, I, like, I, ne <laughs> netflix binging <laughs> love <laughs> netflix binging but, look, like, but, 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 but it's flip side of the same coin whether you're whether you're sexually addicted or sexually anorectic whatever it is it's exactly. the same phenomenon mm -hmm. and it's not it's that middle zone that everyone's uncomfortable with. you can't do it alone you got but, what, but i'm saying people give up because of the shame of failing i, I understand I, I understand but I, I would argue that if you really were to dig into that person it's probably a little flipping and flopping around excesses and anorexia. it's probably different things and i think you're right yeah. about the sexual anorexia yeah. we don't talk enough about that yeah. but after you know people get sober sometimes that exists yeah. it's like you well, know. the couple, one guy in particular I'm thinking of is addicted to 12 steps. Right? That's interesting. It's a, it, I think, Jenny, you've probably seen that where, the, you know, they're 20 years sober, go to a meeting twice a day, mm -hmm. live in this. Because in the big book, I, I love this. I read it when I was about eight years sober, when I was still going to a meeting a day, pretty much. And it says, this program is a design for living, a bridge back to the real world. And I was like. What I read it like five times. Like, <laughs> what the hell does that mean? And I concluded that means that the AA world is not the real world. Most people, yeah. most people conclude I don't need to do this. <laughs> I'm in a couple meetings. I'm fine. I'm bridging back to the real world. Exactly. I'm ready to go. <laughs> oh, exactly. oh, new people. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Like, maybe they shouldn't have written that in the big yeah. book. <laughs> maybe, yeah, because it didn't. It, For the very last. Thing, it really yeah. woke me up. Like, am I? And then I had a great sponsor who told me, you know. It's easy to be king of kindergarten when you've been in it for 20 years. Yeah, what are you okay. doing to challenge yourself? And that's what led to therapy and to Al-Anon. And other paths. I let, never, let me, I gotta tell you something. I started going to Al-Anon when I was 13 years sober. That's nine years ago. I still go. I still don't still feel go? like I belong in it. Oh, that's, oh, I, a lot of <laughs> addicts report that. Because a lot of them are, you know, they feel like they're talking about us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I just don't. It's not as concrete to me yeah. as AA is. Yeah, There's yeah. an AA rule that's yeah, easy. Stop drinking. Don't drink. Right, right. <laughs> right. These, the lines that you live with, Sherry, and you live with Jane, I, those are 
lines that are... And it's certainly not as fun as an AA meeting. <laughs> they don't laugh at Alan on me. Let me take a couple of mess- <laughs> a couple of emails or here. SAA. Uh, no from, laughing. This is from the <laughs> website, uh, doctor.com slash contact. Uh, for all of us, thank you for celebrity rehab. After watching, I realized I needed to get sober. I have 18 months minus one night of weakness and six months continuous sobriety. I Take, like that minus one night of weakness. Yeah, I like that. I, yeah, I don't think you don't have to say you know, even a relapse. Just like it's just, one night it's of slept. weakness, uh, one night of humanity. Yeah, right, <laughs> right. It's like less shame. It's less imper- shaming. Imperfection, yeah. big deal. Mm-hmm. Totally. Taking one day at a time. So grateful every day that I'm the best version of myself. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And this is uh, I'm gonna. Give the name Melissa. Thank you, Melissa. We, 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 God bless you. You will, you will derive dividends. Now, previous unsuccessful inpatient treatment and 12-step meetings. So here's this one. Family alcoholic boyfriend denies my alcohol dependency. I question it. Used medication in the past but stopped suddenly about a year ago. I think they mean opiates. Uh, could I possibly expect success from CBT and or medication while drinking in moderation? Mm, that's a lot of things there. Yeah. I, just to cope with So life. her boyfriend doesn't think she has a problem? Right. Family okay. and alcohol and, and an alcoholic boyfriend denies my alcohol. Well, addiction. if he's drinking, he'll miss his drinking party, friend. Right. If you it, get well, sober. Is it a girl, is back, is it a girl or a girl? It's a girl. It's a girl. This is back to um, Jenny's lock and key uh, mm-hmm. analogy, which is if she starts yeah. getting well, all these people around her aren't going to dig it, Mm-mm. right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Going to get real uncomfortable. Yeah. I mean, C- CBT works, you know, like it's an evidence-based program. It works. And only you're going to know if you can drink in moderation by trying to drink in moderation. So if that's if that's the route that you need to take in order to... But isn't the, isn't the whole in. of 12 yeah. steps cognitive behavioral therapy? Yes, I mean, is. I think yes, I, we is. highfalute... It can be. The, it really is. I just think it's like, the law of attraction. Uh, well, well, but the the uh, the educational variety is yes, how I got part. sober. It was yeah. it, the book. It's, it's, the workbooks are CBT. Yeah, they are, and, yeah. and well, it's changing belief system, yeah. reframing them yeah. to something, else. and evolving yeah. and and starting to recognize what they're saying is right. That one of the greatest things that ever happened to me through 12-step world was they told me when I first got into it what was going to happen and then 10 years later I looked at it and exactly what they said would happen happened yeah and yeah. that you can't deny and that's cognitive behavioral yeah. therapy well, no, and, and Jenny I would argue that it's it's a little bit CBT what's well, what it's, you can sort of get what you need you can apply it the way you need it right what you're yeah. going to respond to you can use so if you're more responsive mm-hmm. to CBT there's more of a CBT component there's also an also emo- DBT and DBT like and, a mindfulness and, and, piece. and an emotionally focused therapy right. part the fourth and fifth step totally. can be deeply EFT but what do you say Jenny yeah I mean I, I think it is definitely an eclectic approach to um, it's it's eclectic it is it's cbt it's dbt it's definitely emotional focused therapy there's a lot of i think probably act involved in it too like identifying your values and like trying to live a valued life living and, okay definitely now, that's that's a really interesting thing so living a certain kind of life a, lo- a lot of you didn't have this so much but barry had i had to live a certain life from the outside in then the inside mm-hmm. changed you you always talk about your internal changes barry had to change the outside before a friend of ours that we worked with had to change the outside first. How he behaved in daily. He had to yeah. lead a certain kind of life yeah. all the time. And then the yeah. inside started coming along. So, again, that's another sort of thing that you're offering. It could also be positive psychology. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think you need a cheerleader. I think every alcoholic, every person struggling with any of this needs somebody that's that that kind of not, not manipulative, n- manipulatable person that's not directly in their lives that can be a supporter and an encourager and that ideally is the sponsor role but the sponsor role is becomes so many other things oh yeah it's so that's weird. a whole other subject right? right another email i come from a broken family when i was a kid my mom had mental illness almost killed me mm. now that i'm 40 40 i run from hmm this is the everything. language is un, no i give my kids everything i run from but I run from relationships. Every relationship with a man, what's wrong with me? Is this normal? Well, it's mm-hmm. understandable. It's not normal. You need right. somebody to take that stuff out and, and sit with you and put it out all on the table so you can start to come, to look at it. Now, mm-hmm. Get some therapy, girl. That's well, exactly that's right. What I, that's yeah. what I so, meant. So, but people, when you say therapy, um, therapy is not very popular in the American public. If you look at census mm-hmm. b- reports about does therapy work, it is very low that people believe that it works. What people are doing more of which... I have mixed feelings about his life coaching. 
Right. Ah, and they're, sober, they're, coaching, they're, sober coaching. I don't like yeah. it either. And, I don't and, like and it. And not only that, the, probably the reason that they don't trust psychotherapy is they get three visits or four visits. And the insurance company yeah. goes, you're fixed now. And yeah, they're like, well, you know. Now we're going to go down a rabbit hole. That is true, though, for I know, sure. I know. But, but I want people to understand that people get the people that you're hearing these heroic stories of triumph and overcoming, whether it's Jenny's or Sherry's or me or, or whoever, it always involves serious therapy. You can't get well without that component. With skilled, trained, yes, licensed with licensed clinicians. people. And, and that it doesn't work because you went to three marriage and family therapist sessions and ended up getting a divorce. And for the rest of your life, you bad talk and shit talk therapy. That's what's happening. Mm-hmm. And we need to hold these people accountable. It worked for me. It saved my life. Well, what's really mm-hmm. scary about addiction therapists is that there aren't as many as you might think. And sometimes mm-hmm. they don't understand addiction. Oh, so some... uh, you, who are you talking to? <laughs> oh. we, we deal with this all the time. We, and, we've dealt with this our entire career. Uh, yeah. And, 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 and in my profession, it's out of control. And to defend them because she and I run the same circles in some of the rehab worlds to defend them I don't think I would be the skilled clinician that I am had I not worked in a psychiatric hospital I think all chemical dependency people should have to do a round of training well, in and a to psychiatric be fair, to understand but, but on, that you were, component. A, you were in a psych hospital in a medically ma- managed abstinence unit which was an island in a psychiatric hospital no I went around to the locked no I know but you I all, know Joe Horosti come on no no but listen but the but the, the if you just work in a psych hospital you, you may shift all the way to that kind of oh, thing oh yeah you know, to the so. dark that was side? one of the best experiences I ever had was working in a psych that. hospital and also so I want to mention isn't just talk therapy. You know, we've we've kind of skimmed across uh, trauma. Yeah. So if there's, you got to find the right trauma therapy. EMDRs and that's gonna bodily help. based therapies and neurobiology. Somatic experience and all that stuff. Yes, yeah. all really good. Drew is right though. The, the, they will not authorize sessions. I don't know what's going on in healthcare in the last 18 months. It is crazy what is going Talk on. Talk about the rehab. There's no coverage. Yeah. Wait till we go there's to single no payer, buddy. Anything. Single payer will be 10 times worse. Just no, prepare I just, yourselves. The, I just don't want to pay and I'll pay cash. I wonder if exactly. that's why I'm getting exactly. busier. You're saying they're not paying the rehab? They're not paying. No. No, they're not. Uh, insurance is not authorizing. Ever. Insurance Anything. is not authorizing uh, th- sessions for depression. You don't get ten sessions. You get three. I did you therapy. get an assessment. I did therapy for eleven years. It's really years. tightened up, <laughs> and I can wow. tell you in the mental health and the chemical dependency right. side, it's tightened up because of the abuses of the yes, recovery that's industry. Right. That's yes. true. You're right. And there's a hey. lot of rich. MFers around Southern California, and I hope they're happy. And not a lot of sober people. So, uh, you know, there's no relationship between the amount of money these guys made and the, the benefit no. to the patient. Oh, that's so disturbing. It is very disturbing. And now, before we wrap up, there, there are two people here that have, I think have had a successful relationship. Yes, we've been talking about broken relationships. So, do we have anything to. Oh, please. Yeah, let's add, have Susan. Yeah. I would love Ring. that. She looks terrorized by this question. <laughs> yeah, but, what has made your relationship work yeah, all these years? Yeah, don't screw up my social media moment here, okay? I'm <laughs> there's there's the one thing that's threatening our relationship. <laughs> <laughs> Take the collar. No, no, no. No, no. We'll do that oh, next time. I want to hear. Uh, we want to hear. what. So well, was it my I, 11 years of therapy? Was it oh, therapy the, you've done? The what? therapy was helpful. Okay. I probably need more, but I okay. don't know how you put up with me either. So. Well, do, I, should I put up with less? I've witnessed it, and you guys give and take like no other couple I've seen. I, I can just, that's all I'll say. You give and take. Compromise. Lots you of compromise. compromise. Well, like, I would argue we've. we've I've seen you, t- her take such looks from you, Dr. Girl. <laughs> and, and I've seen him take such BS from you. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> but there's something loving about that. Aww. Well, I think we want to be in it, right? I yes. think when you, when you get right down to it, we like We're our so lives, lucky. we like each other. But people, some of the people don't talk about that much is forming a life and a family and a stuff is part of this too it's it's a life and a relationship no, and but a i'm mostly with you two the last no, five years yeah, yeah. and it's just like i would find myself going don't talk to me like that or oh. i'm out of here <laughs> 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 well you have to yeah no that's do no you guess. say that behind closed no, doors no 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 i don't you have to be how flexible. do you not say that sherry Tolerance, what, these people are yeah. martians right no, here no <laughs> you're asking the wrong person <laughs> so much the wrong well, it's different <laughs> it's different when you're working with somebody because you know i've seen drew work as a doctor and he bosses people around all the time and that's just his his work ethic it's and just I've the seen military him, you just I've carry seen him out on your TV orders and you just don't take it personally when you're working you right. know obviously mm-hmm. if he did that so, so i don't do that to you on the and outside and when you do it 
I, at other times, I tell you, you to stop react. analyzing me or stop. Or don't you, talk to me. Like left yeah, brain, right don't brain. Talk like that. Are you like more logical? You're more emotional. Mm, yes, a little bit. I'm but, totally but the right one thing, brain. The one thing I think we've gotten to is, if we fight, we're not looking for a winner. There you because go. if there's a winner, there's a we loser. We fight as a team. Yeah, we yeah, Jenny. Or we just we we don't we think of it as not having to win. It's just there'd be a disagreement. But if we fight to the finish, then the relationship loses. Right? Would you say? Yeah, I'm not a fighter. Yeah, and I and she doesn't like even arguing. I, I like hate arguing. arguing. I like arguing. I, so even like when that. he talks to me, he, when we first started dating, he would just be talking to me. I'm like, stop yelling at me. <laughs> <laughs> I just been talking. Like, Why are you always yelling? It's like Saturday Night Live skit. I've gotten used <laughs> like, to it. I've gotten used to it over the but, years. But to be fair, there was a there was a disconnect in what I was saying emotionally, and and I wasn't paying attention to how it was impacting and blending, and that's more real. logical. But listen I would just to him. Do what I do. Listen to him. Everything's emotional. Every word that comes out of his mouth. I mean, the dog went pee pee. The dog went pee pee. <laughs> like, okay, great. He's very dramatic. Or it didn't go pee pee. And I'm really mad because I was out there for about an hour with that dog and it didn't pee. <laughs> That's like, my latest thing. <laughs> the dog's not going to pee. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, just, he does, but it does it in the wrong places. And I have selective hearing, too, because I had triplets and I don't hear anything anymore. Yeah, Jenny, so. imagine doing three of these. Can you imagine that? Don't, no. That's another thing. Don't no. you want to give Susan an award for that? Totally. <laughs> Honestly, like when, like after the first month, so she had tongue, lip, and cheek tie. And so um, she was basically a, like a baby wolverine. And I kept <laughs> thinking of you, Susan. And like, just, I, I just don't know how. Like, I'm terrified <laughs> to have another kid because what if it's twins? Oh. Or what if it's triplets? Ah. Like, mm. what if she, what if it doesn't sleep? Like oh, she yeah. sleeps, you know. Yeah. I just, yeah, yeah. What anyway, if one has brain surgery? Oh, yeah. oh, Jesus. I'm lucky enough to have the greatest mother in law who helps. The other day, I don't know, it was Friday. Elvis doesn't is out of school for summer break, right? It was the first time on a Friday he was home, and and there was three adults, me, my wife, and her mom. We were outgunned by a seven-year-old and a oh, two-year-old. Yeah. Absolutely, all of us were just. I understand. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> I and yelling at each other that we're not doing it right. <laughs> That's just what twins. Wait till you become a grandparent. I'm a grandparent. Oh. I have a two-year-old. Oh, you get the best. He has the, a whole story about don't want to be a, Don't want to be a grandparent. Grandparents are the best. Oh, well, you're not, not quite ready because your kids are a little younger. Yeah, but I'm enjoying my life oh, right now. Greatest. Do you love it? Oh, my God, I love it. Why? Because you can go home. I just, I You're feel, just the best I just, parenting. that's, of course, of course, right? you know, because I was a single mom, so I don't, yeah, definitely, because I, but I just love her, she just, I just love yeah. her, and I love to do this bonding thing with her, and I'm seeing all the things that, that make them grow and become great people. It is the greatest. Thing. <laughs> all right, wrap it up. Jenny, as always, congratulations. Peace You're an inspiration. I am Jenny, get the book, and we'll keep, keep me posted on the parenting and the baby. Susan can't stop looking at your baby. She thinks oh, the, I'll send you guys more adorable videos. baby. Yeah, she can, I've gotten a lot you. of baby pictures this week, but this one's Aww. like right up there. That's what she keeps talking about. Oh my god! I, I was going to show so the video, happy. but she does, she wants her privacy. That's so fine. That's okay. Uh, and then, also, of course, she ends up on the anyway. Here we go. <laughs> so good to see you, head. Jenny. Right. Oh, so good to see you. Well, Appreciate people telling a friend Sherry. about the podcast. Also, go to get on the contact list, doctorial.com slash content. You get a weekly email. We've got the opioid series there. Uh, don't forget to go to doctorial.com. Click through on the sponsor banners. We appreciate it. Both Bergamot and Hydrolite. These are products that we can stand behind. Amazon link. Don't forget that as well. For the Hydrolite purchase, you get 30% off. Uh, Drew 18. For the Bergamot, you get. Uh, 25% off if you use the code Drew. Uh, of course, the book, Marriage and Relationship Junkie. Thank K you. Kicking your relationship. Love it. Very great Kicking your thank obsession. You. Well, the thank uh, you for having me. Everybody that reads it likes this book. You, you know what I mean? Really There's good a lot reviews. Of, a lot yeah, of great Farrah, reviews. Farrah yeah. Abraham loved it. Yes, that's a shout. She was on vacation and she stuck it on her towel and Instagrammed yep. it. It was wonderful. So she loves it. She told yeah. me. Thank uh, you. Don't forget, uh, Dr. Drew, come all my stuff. Let me is ask there. Jenny one thing before we go. Jenny? Yeah. Are you there? How come you yes, never worked in recovery up there? Uh, recovery up here isn't really great. Well, honestly. guess what? Like, Bobby Forrest is coming up there. Oh, team up. Are you really? Yeah, up in uh, Queen Anne area. Where is that? Oh, you fancy girl, you. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't know where it is yet. 
Yeah, uh, Queen give Anne. me a holler. I'll t- uh, yeah, I'll Let's call you. Something. I would love to yeah. have you part part of it. Okay, well, cool. That would be a I'd powerful be. team, you two. Okay. Uh, Doctor. Mm-hmm. Com. Check out the KBC podcast. Get that also at KBC.com. Me and Lawrence Savon. We're there every day. Uh, this life hashtag you live, of course. The new Swole Patrol. Don't Health die. Don't, Don't die. Don't do. Bob Forrest. Adam and Doctor Drew show at this life podcast. Uh, also tell your thoughts at uh, hashtag you live. Any. Twitter or anything for you? Any? Oh, it's somewhere. Don't die. Don't die. Just hashtag don't die. Good Just one. look for that. All right, y'all. Thanks so much. We'll see you next Thank time. Thank you. Okay, great. Bye-bye. No, I'm... Is... Remember, you can find all these podcasts at drdrew.com. The Dr. Drew Podcast, the This Life Podcast, and the Adam and Drew Podcast, which is available five days a week. Find them all on iTunes and rate us five stars. Subscribe and get it first. And if you're really happy, click on the Amazon banner at drdrew.com to help support the show. We'll thank you for it. If you join the email list via drdrew.com slash contact, we'll send you a weekly infusion newsletter with Dr. Drew's News. We're so grateful when you get in touch. We read all your emails and we'll bring you the subject matter you want to hear about. You live.